the Plotcast podcast with the Potty Plotters. Hello and welcome back to the Potty Plotters Plotcast podcast. This is episode 26 and I'm Julia. And I'm still Elaine. And if you'd like to get in touch with us at any time via our social media channels, please do. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Potty Plotters. TikTok at The Potty Plotters. Email us naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk or check out our website pottyplotters.uk Keith has also been in touch with us with a photo of his sweet peas. They are absolutely beautiful. Isn't he clever? Yes, we do love sweet peas. Yeah, but it's lovely that people have taken the time as well to send us photographs, Julia. That's really important to us. Yeah, thanks for getting in contact with us, Keith. And also, we've had a question from Sinead from the The Netherlands. Netherlands. Flipping it, that's a long way. (laughs) (laughs) And Sinead wants to know, how do I purchase the equivalent of nemeslug here in the Netherlands. I've just found a massive amount of slugs under my strawberry pots. By the way, love your podcasts. Oh, she says the right thing. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. So, can you get the equivalent? Yes, you can. I don't know what they're called, but you can. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, then. <laughs> Nothing like, nothing like a full and frank discussion around nemeslugs. Right, maybe well, right can, I don't know whether you can get nemeslugs, but you can get the equivalent in the Netherlands. And I have messaged Sinead directly with the details of that. But if anyone in the Netherlands is also listening and wants to get in contact and wants the nemeslugs, then contact us again because we like people. We like people contacting us, don't we, Elaine? I think it's time you went home, Julia. But we have got this podcast to do first. So, look, the plots are looking plumptious, the greenhouses are groaning, the polytunnels are topped up with tomatoes, the freezers are bursting. Flipping out, this is the start of another year. So, what are we talking about this time? Oh, it's cucumbers, melons, peas, chilies, and a chat with Callum about taking on an allotment as a beginner. Come on then, let's get cracking. All right. Contact the Potty Plotters anytime on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Potty Plotters or email naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk The cucumbers are growing at a great pace now in the greenhouses and the polytunnels but Elaine, I've had problems. Oh, what's the matter? A black fly. Black fly. What, on, on my cu- cucumbers? On my, well, actually, on my cucumber leaves. So what I would say to anyone, if your cucumbers are not looking very happy, to start off with, turn your leaves over to see whether there's any infestations. And what are you going to do if you do? I mean, have you done that? Yes, yes. So what I did was I identified there was a problem and I turned the leaves over. And some of the leaves had masses of black fly, some didn't. So what I did where there was masses of black fly, I literally cut the leaf off. And how will that affect the plant though, Julia? Well, there was still plenty of leafy growth at the top. Okay. So for uh, photosynthesis yeah um so it won't really affect the plant and what happens with with cucumbers and tomatoes is as the plant puts on lots of growth it starts to become exhausted anyway and the lower uh, leaves start to turn yellow so they naturally fall off so it cutting them off isn't going to cause any problems i think it's just been a strange time though hasn't it because it's been so hot we've had so little rain the weather has been you know we had loads of cold if you remember yeah. right in the spring so all the way through this process some people might think it's really easy to negotiate your way round when you've got everything in a yeah. greenhouse but the truth is I can't believe that you've got green fly, Julia. Black fly. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a difference in colour, <laughs> I that's I didn't all. change the colour, but um, everything else was looking quite healthy and, and they are putting on a great pace. And as you know, watering consistently, giving them a feed every week with the tomato feed. And they are putting on plenty of cucumbers. But one thing I have noticed, when we've had like really high temperatures, which we have been having, um, even though I've been watering consistently, they've almost been coming out a curvy shape. If, if you kind of get what I mean they've kind of it's almost like they 
I've run out of energy in the yeah. middle. So, mm. and, and also when it has been really, really hot, you'll find that some of the pollinators don't like to pollinate. So you will have a period where perhaps you've not got any cucumbers coming on or they're turning yellow and dropping off. And that is because of pollination issues. And that really is because it's just too hot for them to be moving around. I get that actually. And that's, uh, that's some good advice. The main thing that I would say is that if it is too hot out there, put some shading on your greenhouse, either whitewash the windows or alternatively, again, put some debris netting over the top just to give it that little bit of uh, coolant really. Yeah. Not a huge amount, but enough to, to let the pollinators yeah. get in your greenhouse. And another thing perhaps we ought to mention to people to keep an eye out for, uh, with it being so hot, is keeping an eye out for your plant getting stressed and throwing out any male flowers which will then which you shouldn't have on all, vi- all female varieties which grow nowadays in greenhouses and if you get a male flower come on pinch it off because otherwise if the bees get in and cross pollinate with your females you're going to end up with bitter cucumbers yeah it's them males isn't it it is them males mm. again making your cucumbers bitter but before we move on also i just wanted to mention you've had a little issue with your cucumbers haven't you have i let's not beat around the bush you were meant to be growing the big long ones oh yes yes i always grow telegraph improved which is a very long one and i do like a long one as i've mentioned before and that's what you thought you'd say wasn't it yeah Yeah. Yeah. and i've had this problem a few years ago that i can assure you that they are not telegraph improved so disappointing but nevertheless i have got plenty of cucumbers and we are going to use some in a little while for a little test and I'm going to make something with them but it's disappointing yeah the plotcast podcast with the potty plotters so here we are in Julia's polytunnel and Julia they look like christmas baubles what on <laughs> earth is cracking off here <laughs> They're my melons, duck. <laughs> so I've got quite a few melons now growing on the plants, the three plants. And what I've been doing is I've been... My husband eats a lot of oranges and I've been saving all the nets that the oranges come in and I'm going to use them to support my melons because obviously some of them are a bit far apart so I can't support them in a bra because that wouldn't work. So come down with me, Lou. OK. And... <clears throat> When you put the uh, net in on the melon, do it before it gets too big, otherwise you won't be able to get it in the net, the the hole that you've made in the net. And all I'm doing is I'm tying the net in around the melon. Can't get in now. And the reason I'm doing this is because, as you know, Elaine, they do get quite weighty and on these very thin vines, they could easily snap and we want them to get to their full capacity. And so all I'm doing is finding somewhere in here just to suspend them and that will help support them as they grow so they don't fall off Elaine. That's a brilliant hint and tip actually Julia and joking apart we do use bras occasionally don't we? We do, we do and we have used them for the melons before but as I said they're quite far apart in here but anything that will support them and give them a little bit of uh, help will stop them breaking the the vine and the good thing is you've put this great big zimmer in here so it can help you to get up off your knees <laughs> thank you i've not got as far to go as you though have I? <laughs> hints and tips for shortcuts to success the potty plotters plotcast so just a quick hint and tip here if you're growing chilies or peppers and i'm going to show you on these peppers um What will happen sometimes is as the peppers are growing or the chilies, the flower, the part of the flower will remain stuck to the fruit. So what I suggest you do is you actually knock that off. And the reason I do that, what I've found is where it gets stuck and doesn't move, the uh, fruit starts to rot. So it's worth doing it if it's not already expelled the fruit flower itself. Right then, now over to the, uh, well, where we set the, well, where we set the peas, Julia. Julia, we're on your plot. We set peas here. Well, where are they? (laughs) Uh, Disaster. A double disaster, a treble disaster, I think is um, is all I can say. Um, As you can see, they've been replaced by runner beans now. Uh, It was a, well... Let's start with the story. First of all, it was very cold and they didn't like that, but it didn't kill them. And I wrapped them up and they got going a little bit more. And then I took the netting off because they got big enough, put the pea sticks in 
And do you know what? They got decimated by the pigeons. pigeons. The pigeons, Elaine. Flipping Honestly, out. they had all the growing tips and everything out of them. And I nursed them a little bit and I thought they might recover. No. So I think, you know, at Wimbledon, you know when it's time for Wimbledon, they get some kind of um, bird of prey, don't they, to kind of scare off all the pigeons? Yeah. Do we know anyone who's got one? A bird of prey that we can just have circling the allotments? We could put a shout out out. Out, 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 out. out. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, that's what happened. And, and then I planted some Monge 2 next to it because yeah. I thought, well, if it's French, so they won't know them. Yeah. Um, but no. Good they, disguise. <laughs> no, I know. But apparently, pigeons like Monge 2 as well. I mean, they, I have got some on, but they, again, you can see they've already started pecking. So um, I could have cried, really. I'm sure lots of people can recognise this feeling. So I've got no peas. Well, Julia, all I can say is in my left hand, I've got the microphone in my right. I've yeah. got in my left hand from, uh, I think it was number one episode. Oh, when we did, uh, yeah. Come on to my plot and I'll show you some peas. Oh, all right then. Well, goodness me, look at all these peas that you've got yeah. here. Uh, how have you done that? Uh, I just planted them. I think it comes from uh, being a bit of an expert, really, on peas. Ironically, the thing that I hate most, but they're not bad, are they? These are aldermen, and I would say these are probably seven foot uh -huh. and uh, still growing. Huh. Hang on a minute, what's this sign? It says, pigeons go next door. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way that you grow them. Put plenty of twigs up. I haven't covered the tops and you can see the pigeons have nibbled the top. Yeah. But now I can see producer Gareth nibbling them and I think he's more of a pest now than <laughs> the pigeons. <laughs> have you got a gun? I'm just asking for a friend. <laughs> a water gun? Yes. That would be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> the Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters. So today we're talking to Callum Stokes and Callum, you are a new plot holder. We just wanted to know more about why on earth did you want an allotment? My dad had an allotment when I was younger. I got into gardening from an extremely young age, about eight or nine. And um, as, I, as I've grown up and I went off to uni and gardening became a bit of a thing for, of the past for me and I missed it. Um, and after COVID and lockdown the pandemic and everything that we've been through the last few years I decided that I wanted to get back to it back to nature back to like that basics back to almost a purer version of myself that wasn't so caught up in the modern world and what life should be and I just was craving to grow again is it as you were expecting then if you wanted to get back to a more natural word? I mean, you are on our site. You do you are very closely located to us, so is it up to your expectations? Yes and no. It's it's in in some respects, yeah, it was exactly what I thought it would be. Um, but then actually it's a lot harder than I thought it'd be. I realised I got a lot of help when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting as much of that now. <laughs> so what is it that makes it so difficult then? It's finding the time sometimes. It's 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 a very very demanding. It's almost like a full time job, and finding that that time sometimes the energy as well, working around the weather, and um, that's the main difficulties. And then the knowledge. <laughs> and what have you learned? Because you've only been here with us for a few months, but I mean you're up here nigh on every day. We see Callum, don't we? Yeah, and and. It Callum actually touches on an important point because we've always said to people it's not a hobby, it's a lifestyle choice. It's because you have to incorporate it into your lifestyle. So you're obviously very committed. You're here in the morning, you're here at night. We see you quite often. But as Elaine said, what what is it that you've you've kind of discovered really? What is it that you've learned and, and the hard things and moving forward, what would you be looking for? I've learned that you don't you don't fit an allotment around your life, you fit your life around the allotment. <laughs> um, I've also learned not to sow my seeds too early. <laughs> and um, most importantly, not to sow too many. <laughs> Which is what we all do. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've learned how, how lovely it is to be outside, to be social, to be gardening, to be, to be doing something that's so primitive for humans that we kind of lost in a modern society to be able to grow your own food and grow your own flowers and sort of give back to nature what you take from it. 
And it is impressive as to what you've been growing because we're sitting at the moment in the polytunnel surrounded by aubergines, tomatoes, chilies, peppers, uh, cucumbers. Um, looks like more aubergines at the top over there. And goodness knows what else. So this is just a smattering really about the things that you've grown. Tell us about the things that are on your plot. Oh, on our plot. So we've we've got a vast variety of things, mainly things that we decided um weren't easy to come by ourselves or were expensive we decided you know you can get potatoes really cheap we wanted to do stuff that isn't as easy to come by and, and isn't as cheap in the shops um so we've got uh, things like collets sweet corn because i love sweet corn <laughs> a lot of salad stuff and then i think the main majority of it is is flowers and um, we've got things like nasturtiums, which you can eat and are really good for distracting the pests. I, I was really keen to do cut flowers, which I'm, I'm just about getting close to it. But I also realise now that I'm very attached to the plants as they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so. quite a nice thing to say, because you do get attached to what you grow, don't you? Massively. So looking forward then... What are you going to be doing? Because you're only with us for the 12 months, which will be up in December. What are you going to do after that? Hopefully we'll get my own plot on this site because it is such a lovely, lovely site here. Everyone's so creative and individual. Just looking at the other plots around here is inspiring. Oh, so many ideas and so many, so much going on in my head at the moment about what to do next year. Um, we've currently got a lavender that we're going to take some cuttings of to make a lavender hedge for the plot next year. I want to get a greenhouse and do as, or a polytunnel and do as much of what we've got in here already again. So transfer everything that you've done at the moment yeah. into your new plot. And then expand. Callum, I know we've spoken about the challenges of time and the commitment involved, but what are the other problems that you might have encountered that maybe moving forward you're thinking about so you know what perhaps what you weren't expecting maybe um i think the biggest one water how how scarce water can actually be <laughs> i did the plot i had in the past they had the troughs and we were very close to them so i never really had to go far and and this on this plot i think the the big tank at the tops ran out a couple of times so i've ended up walking quite away many times for my water <laughs> Makes you appreciate it, though, when you've got it. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. And if you were to um, encourage other people, similar to yourself, similar age to yourself, what would you actually say to them? I'd say the reward. The reward in having an allotment, watching everything grow, knowing that you've, you've you know, planted it from seed and you've nurtured it and you've... That, that's your creation. That's your, your place in the world and watching it, you know, out in the on the plot and it gets bigger and bigger. I mean, I still come down now and look at everything and go, that's amazing, <laughs> like, I, de I did that. <laughs> and of course, there are challenges, as Julia said. The biggest challenge for you, you've said, is water. But you see, I like to call my mistakes experiments. Have you had any experiments at all while you've been here? I have had so many. <laughs> more, more than I think I can count and more than I try to remember, because I've tried to forget most of them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think my biggest one was, was, again, sowing the seeds too early, but also doing them on the windowsill at home where it wasn't too bright and everything got very long and and leggy. And I think I, well, I came down and you threw them all away. <laughs> <laughs> it was brutal. <laughs> oh, it was very brutal. <laughs> which is one way, at one, <laughs> which is Elaine's approach. I might have been a, bit, a little bit more gentle. But... Well, I think at the time I was heartbroken, but in hindsight, knowing that if all of them would have carried on, or we would have been able to save them and successfully they would have been then hanging around to go out or they would have gone out too early the frost would have killed them so either way i would have been devastated i'd bear earlier than later <laughs> it is and that, you know as a reassurance for you the first year is kind of the biggest learning curve that you'll go on and i think you know moving forward that is where you're going to learn and as long as you don't make the mistakes again that is the main thing so if you were kind of giving anyone adv advice on what was the best tip you could give them? What's the best tip you would give them? Just give it a go. Just try. Try not to be too too attached, too heartbroken when things don't go right. You'll get there. Come and have a look at my plot. Come on. <laughs> Contact the Potty Plotters anytime on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Potty Plotters or email naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk. 
Julia, if yeah. you get a glut of cucumbers, I thought that I'm going to teach you what to do with them because a lot of people let them go to rack and ruin and it's such a waste. Oh, no, they never go to rack and ruin. I can always find someone who wants a cucumber. What are you doing well, with that one? What I've done here is I've peeled one already, but I'm just peeling with a potato peeler these cucumbers. Now, Elaine, before you do anything yeah. further, can I taste the uh, cucumber before it goes in just to make sure it's not a rogue male one? Yes. I don't want you poisoning us. No. Right, I shall chop a chunk off for you. Thank you. I'm now sitting with my legs crossed, my arms crossed and everything else, because if that's male, <laughs> we're in the cack. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite nice. All right, OK, mm. then quite nice as a cucumber goes. Well, it's not telegraph improved, is it, like no, we said? told you, it definitely isn't. So, whilst you uh, just listen to this, this mm -hmm. is me doing work, um, I think you might recognise this, Julie, because obviously you hear it so often, me doing work, <laughs> while you're just sitting around chewing on a piece of nothing. So, right then, I've now peeled three cucumbers, yeah. and all I'm going to do is take off the top and the bottom of each right that's all we have to do do you think it's i need to sample each of the cucumbers because one of <laughs> you're getting on my nerves right well, it's, yeah. a... it's like having kids isn't it here try that one well i know that you've given people <laughs> rogue ones before that's all right yeah Yeah, that's fine. Can we on? <laughs> right, OK, then. So it's really important that when you make this cucumber gin that you take off the peel. It's really important because yeah. otherwise it makes the gin bitter. And then all you do is you take now the length of go. the cucumber. Thank you. And um, because that will save a job. And then all you do is literally and you get splattered everywhere all over Gareth's microphone. Oh, uh. oh, I'm going to be in big trouble. I'm going to be in trouble anyway. So you're so. taking out the middle bit. The I am. Yeah. Bit. Take all the seeds out. And then all you do is you chop up the cucumber. Very easy to do. There's no scientific thing about it. It don't matter what size they are. And then you get your big sweetie jar. Chuck your cucumber in there, mm. right? And as I say, I've done it with three. I have done it. Oh, look, a rogue, that's gone. Right, put that in there and um, carry on until all the cucumber is in. The cheapest gin possible, yeah. nothing fancy at all. Open I it. love it this time of year because you go to the super, cheaper supermarkets, don't you? And you literally have the whole conveyor belt full of gin. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a worry because at half past nine in the morning, I'm explaining to people. Now then what I'm doing is I'm making cucumber gin. And you know when you're saying it, they don't well, believe you. I'm surprised you, you don't get given problem. an AA card or anything like that, really. <laughs> but say, <laughs> that smells really nice. And then put it in the uh, sweetie jar yeah. and then literally... Put it on one side. You don't have to do anything. Just fill it up with cucumber. Leave it for a fortnight. And I can tell you now, the flavour of that gin will take on the cucumber flavour. And it is beautiful. What you do need to do is to top it up with tonic water. And what I do is I put another slice of cucumber in and it is gorgeous. Oh, you are cosmopolitan, aren't you? Yeah, I can be. What is it? <laughs> Cocktail. <laughs> the Potty Plotters Plotcast with simple recipes for gluts and guts. Right, that's all. So that's the knife falling on one side, but that's the gin put on one side. And I'm just going to leave it now to take on the flavour of the cucumber. And in between times, that's adults. Let's see what little people could be doing. Julia, little people, what can they be doing at this time of year? Are you referring to me <laughs> yes. or young people? Young, young children, people, yes, what children, I mean, children that's the yeah, thing. What yeah, can yeah, they yeah, be yeah. doing on the yeah. plots this time yeah. of year? Well, it's a bit hot to get them digging, so don't... <laughs> 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 Although I do like to offer in financial inducements for them to do painting. That always Ooh, that's works good. well. Yeah. So if you need a shed painting, it's always good to get the kids involved on that. Oh, yeah, that's really good. So um, what else do we get up to with kids well, on the plot? Well, I mean, what I've done before is uh, I've bought some bird food. You know the fat balls? Yeah. What I've actually done is I've smashed them up with the kids, get the seeds out and then plant the seeds. It's great because you never know what's going to come out of these seeds. Some of them are sunflowers, some are wheat, some are barley it's great and it's an adventure and doesn't take long for them to germinate so let them discover what's in these fat balls 
So thanks to Callum for being so frank about how it is to take on a new plot and we hope he does really well in the future. And I, I think, think that he, he, he will, yeah, definitely. because he's got the history that goes with it, he's got the enthusiasm, Julia is up here all the time, yeah. but for me it's the fact that he recognised how much time growing your own actually takes. Yeah. And next time on episode 27, we'll be catching up on the spinach. That's good, because then the uh, producer person can be eating that. And the dahlias. Oh, we the love dahlias. Our dahlias. Oh, oh, come on, yeah. really, in leaps and bounds. That's great. And I tell you what, I've been drying seeds as well. Um, and I've got some hints and tips that will go with that. You'll like that one. And we'll be talking about the beetroot again. Brilliant. I love yeah. beetroot. Did I ever say that before? I just love beetroot. Yeah. So set your alarm clock for the same time next week or simply press that follow button. You know, Julia, it does work because I've done it. I wonder if anyone's listening to us on a beach right now. Producer's got his hand up. Mm. It's not a beach. We're in a polytunnel, yeah. but it is very warm, Gareth. The Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters is an Amberland Media production.